Hi everybody, it's Chris Gadowski, Superintendent. I'm here uh, to share in person a really important and yet disappointing message. The message is that we've made the difficult decision to join other districts throughout the Metro Denver area in announcing today that we will not be returning to physical in-person schooling for the remainder of this 2019-20 school year. It wasn't an easy decision to come to, but I've been persuaded as I've been in meetings with public health officials frequently throughout the last several days and weeks before that it's the right thing to do. We understand from our public health officials that the peak of the COVID outbreak in the Denver Metro area is likely to hit the last week of April and that we'll have aggressive social distancing restrictions that continue throughout May. Even in the very best case, most optimistic scenario that they've seen, the best we could hope for is something that really isn't feasible in terms of school operations. It would be a scenario in which you have six foot social distancing that would apply on school buses. That's not gonna work. It would require us to have six foot social distancing in our lunch lines and at our tables. We're not gonna be able to pull that off either. Our lunch periods would go on for hours and there'd be really no time for any meaningful learning in that scenario. We wouldn't be able to occupy our schools with the full cohort of kids, we'd have to bring in kids A through D in the alphabet for a portion of the day, or kids within a grade level or two at the elementary school for a portion of the day and rotate students around between hours of the day and days of the week. It's just not gonna be the same kind of productive and, and efficient learning experience, quality experience that we can do much better at with remote learning. And so because of those factors, I'm here to share that really disappointing news with you all today. I feel especially badly for our graduating seniors that are having just a really bummer, crummy, I could use a lot of other adjectives for it, final semester of their high school experience. My commitment to you all, I know there's lots of unknowns about especially graduation and what does that look like. My commitment to you on behalf of our Board of Education, our senior leadership, your principals, your teachers, as we'll do everything within our power to give you a quality and meaningful send off into life after high school. The kinds of scenarios we're hoping will play out and be okay include in-person ceremonies and stadium kinds of settings that would be sometime mid to late summer. Even at that, I can't promise you that that's gonna be feasible in the end. It all depends really on what public health uh, restrictions will look like as we get into the mid-summer stretch, but we'll do everything we can uh, to give you a great send-off. We want to see you in person, shake your hands, give you hugs if we can. Those are huge traditions that are important to us, and if there's any way that we can still uphold them, we'll do it. Others of you, I, I know this decision makes uh, for challenging environments in your home when you're working on uh, caring for a child and also teaching and remote learning. That's a big challenge. We recognize it, it's not ideal, but we'll do everything we can to find structures that allow you to, to work in both worlds. If you're a staff member, for many parents, we know that you have work responsibilities and then the childcare responsibilities on top and remote learning environment make it difficult to do both, sometimes impossible to do both. I really apologize that you're in that spot. I would do what I could to make it different. I just don't see any viable options given these restrictions to find any other path to support you in making that work. Probably a lot of questions that many of you will have around school lunch balances, around fees that you may have prepaid for things like before and after school care, what happens with credits and grades and grade level promotion, with prom, on and on and on. We know those questions are out there. We'll have definitive answers for you thoughtful answers, ones that I believe will minimize burden and get money back out into the hands of those who need it uh, very desperately right now that we'll have a lot of that nailed down and shared out with you next week. So thanks for your patience in advance there. I wanna thank all the folks who've worked tirelessly in this last week to stand up remote learning. We've now deployed over 10,000 computing devices to students so they can engage in that learning. We've had staff members, teachers who worked tremendously hard to get ready for remote learning, to support the very different kinds of needs of kids we have in the system, whether they're second language learners, students with disabilities, students who are gifted and talented, 
students who are highly engaged in school, students who aren't so much. It's been a big task, but our staff's done an amazing job stepping into this very new world, and I'm confident that we'll get even better still as we have more time in the remote learning space. So as I send off uh, this message, thank you, number one, for your patience, number two, for your understanding. Please send out your thoughts uh, and support those students who are missing out on so many important parts of the school experience that go well beyond learning content and academics. A lot of school, the most important parts of school go well beyond academics, and I feel really badly for our kids who are missing out on that. And we'll do our very best in the months ahead and in the school year ahead to make it up for students in whatever ways we possibly can. I know that to be true. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a good weekend. I'll be in touch next week.